Hi, this is John Scott with Sport America and Athletic Quest. I wanted to take a moment to welcome you. What you're going to hear on this audio will be two pieces from radio shows. One done in Salt Lake City on the High School Sports Zone radio show with Rick Bullion and Coach Bill Groves, a 20-year college coach in baseball. And the second piece will be a radio show on KFAN, the largest radio station in the country out of New York City, where we spent an hour explaining how our program works and how the system can be beneficial to all high school student athletes at all levels of college competition. We are here to assist student athletes in four key areas, academics, athletics, marketing themselves to colleges, and helping them to fund and find ways to fund their college education. I'm happy to introduce to you now Rick Bullion with the High School Sports Zone Show and Coach Bill Groves. And welcome back to the Academy Sports High School Sports Zone. Time to get out on the zone phone to the one, the only Billy Groves with Athletic Quest. Billy, what do you got for us today? Thanks for having us back, Rick. Now that we're going into the month of July and high school fall seasons are upon us here very shortly, we need to get seniors to be ready for the recruiting process as soon as possible. Well, you know, there's a couple of facets to that. One of the things, of course, is the NCAA Clearinghouse. Hopefully, the student-athletes have taken a look at that. Right. By coming on with our Athletic Quest recruiting system right now, we can uh, get these young athletes on board with the NC2A Clearinghouse, and so they know what they need to be doing academically as well as athletically to get the ball rolling. You know, and another aspect that they want to take a look at is maybe the Athletic Quest Clearinghouse. That might even be more important than what I'm talking about is the survey. Hey, they did it on me 30 years post-mortem, and it was accurate to the level that not only should I have been recruited, that I was recruited. Exactly, Rick. The system that we've designed will be able to get the athlete to the right level and get them to a point where they're being recruited by the right NC2A Division One, Two, Three, Junior College, any level, and get them rolling academically and athletically. Well, as I've always said, the thing I like about your business, the thing I like about your service is you're not trying to find a Division One school for every athlete. Yes, there are those in the state of Utah, but there is a school for every athlete, and maybe it's an NCAA school, maybe it's an NAIA or junior college, but they're out there. You just have to find them. That's exactly right. As you know, that's one of our mottos is that there is a college for every athlete, and most of the Division One schools, those coaches do know the elite athlete in all sports, and a lot of our uh, emphasis is trying to find that college. It could be Division Two, Division Three, mid-level Division One, and letting those athletes know that even though they're maybe not being recruited Division One, they have opportunities to several thousands of colleges that are there for them to be recruited to and play. And as always, how do they get a hold of you? Get a hold of us at athleticquest.net and look us up. That's the way to go right there. All right, Billy Groves, athleticquest.net. you got to check it out. If you're a high school senior, junior, yeah, even a sophomore, you want to check it out. athleticquest.net. Welcome to the Sports Edge on the flagship station for New York sports. The Fan, Sports Radio 66, WFAN New York. Here's your host, Rick Wolf. Hi, everybody, and welcome to this week's edition of the Sports Edge. I am indeed Rick Wolf. Well, it's the middle of June in the school year, and for lots of kids who are in high school, it's time to start thinking about not just about next year in school, but also plans for college, especially if you have any dreams about playing sports in college. Now, most of you know that I, I like to spend some time talking about the new ways that high school athletes and their parents can make sure that college coaches can find them. And to that end, I want to talk about perhaps the very best when it comes to college recruiting. Remember, the ideal situation is for the athlete to find a college program where he or she can actively play as well as perhaps get a scholarship and maybe even get an education as well. Let me put it to you this way. Let's say, let's say your daughter plays, I don't know, let's say volleyball in, in high school and she's very good at it and she wants to find a college program in New York State where she can continue to play volleyball in college. Well, how in the world would you find that list of colleges? And how would you even go about contacting a college coach about volleyball? How would you let that coach know about your, your daughter's abilities and how she stacks up against other kids 
who want to play at that school. Well, when we come back from the break, I'm going to be joined by John Scott, the CEO of Athletic Quest, the number one rated college recruiting service in the nation. And if you have questions about how your son or daughter can market their talents to colleges, be sure to call them this morning at 718-937-6666. Back here on the Sports Edge, we're talking this morning about the entire process of how in the world do high school athletes, kids who are who want to aspire to play sports in college, how in the world can they, in fact, market themselves uh, to find the right college or colleges that might be interested in them and their services? Now, the fact of the matter is, if you're a high school basketball player, you already know about uh, UConn and their men's and women's programs and how great they are, or Duke or whoever it may be. But the fact is, that's just the tip of the iceberg. And, of course, schools like those already have uh, substantial coaching staffs whose sole full-time job is to scour the nation and scour the world for top, top high school players. But again, that's very much the exception to the situation. For most kids, they go through high school sports and they have a good time, they're good at it, and they say, gee, it'd be fun to find a place to play college sports as well. How in the world do I even know where to begin? And how, if I do find some colleges, how do I contact the coach? What does the coach want to see? Do they want to see a, a, a videotape highlight reel? Will they come watch me play in a showcase? What's the entire process? It's, it's very, very complicated and much different than it was, let's say, 10, 15, 20 years ago. Now, joining me this morning is John Scott. John is the uh, CEO of Athletic Quest. And uh, Athletic Quest is, is a college sports recruiting system that is highly regarded and, in fact, is the number one system in the country today. John has a long and successful history of his own in athletics, a former top high school, college, and professional basketball player and coach. He knows, quite frankly, firsthand how difficult and, at times, frustrating the recruiting process can be. John, good morning. Good morning, Rick. How are you? I'm well, thank you. Thank you for, for getting up early this morning and joining us. John, you know, as I said just a, a few seconds ago, the, the, the old way of or a high school senior or, or a kid even his junior year of simply writing a letter or, or calling a college coach uh, saying, I'd like to attend your college and talk about the possibility of getting a scholarship, those days are long gone. Uh, and, and certainly uh, these days, thanks to the Internet and thanks to uh, you know, electronic communications, things have changed dramatically. That being said, it's still a very, very uh, uphill battle for kids in high school to know how to find the right programs. We, I assume you agree with all this. I agree with it 100%. Uh, there's you know, the old saying that knowledge is power, and we definitely are in the age of automatic gratification, but that should also come true for trying to find a place to play in college. As you were talking earlier, you mentioned how would you find a women's volleyball program in the state of New York. Mm-hmm. And I, I don't know if the listeners have any idea of how many programs are even in the East region. We have 12 regions of the country that we have on our website, but... There are 345 women's volleyball college programs in the East Region. And if you get to New York, New York has 136 colleges with volleyball programs. Now, how, how, do, how do you know that? I just looked it up on our website. So, let me, <laughs> All right, let's back up a second here, John. You're getting ahead of me here. Just uh, going through the Athletic Quest website, you have all this information literally at, at your fingertips where, as I just happened to mention at the top of the show, well, let's say if your daughter wants to play volleyball in college and, and say, in New York State, you said in, in the East region there are 345 colleges, and again, that could be Division One, Two, or Three, correct? Also including junior college, so there are four different classifications of college competition. Okay, so in other words, there's over 300 uh, volleyball programs in the East alone, and you said 136 in New York State alone? That's correct. So if, there, if, you're, if you're listening to the show and, you're, and your daughter is a volleyball player in high school and wants to continue playing volleyball into college and you live in New York State, there's 136 college programs uh, offering that program. I, I can't, and that's, that's extraordinary. And that's just the kind of information that parents need to know. And I, I, John, I, I am sure that uh, you must have parents or, or kids contact you all the time saying, how do I get a list of all the other programs out there? Uh, that, must, that must be a typical kind of uh, question for you. 
It's very typical. In fact, we had a high school men's basketball coach in the state of Maryland call uh, last month asking about volleyball because his daughter is a volleyball player. And he said, you know, I have been researching on the Internet for the last two months, an average of 10 hours a week, volleyball programs just for the state of Maryland. And I asked him, how many have you come up with? And he said, well, I've come up with 12. Mm Mm-hmm. I said, would you like to know how many are out there? And he said, I really would. And within 20 seconds, I pulled up 32, all 32 of them. And he, uh, he was a little bit disgusted with all the effort he'd wasted. Yeah, so basically, you, you, you have the, 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 the data uh, in, on your website where obviously parents can come to you and, and quickly do a search for, as you say, not only finding how many uh, local programs in their particular state, but obviously across the country, at what level, divisions one, two, or three, uh, junior college, obviously there must be information there how to contact the coach, either, I guess, phone numbers or email addresses, all this stuff which is so vital to the entire process of, of getting the word out. Uh, and, you know, again, John, this, is, this has changed so much in the last, uh, you know, decade or so. I mean, uh, I mean, there was a time in this country where if you were a top high school athlete, uh, you would sort of expect that uh, you might uh, just have your college or, or your high school coach uh, make some phone calls to, to college coaches about a kid. That doesn't happen anymore. Well, it, it does happen sometimes, but even in the old days, it was seldom. I'm, I, was, uh, I played high school basketball in the Boston area, and I was recruited by 40 or 50 different colleges. Mm-hmm. But uh, no disrespect to my high school coach, because I loved the man, but he didn't know the process. He didn't know how to go through the process. He had not been through it as an athlete or as a college coach. And so sometimes uh, high school athletes have the expectation that, A, college coaches will come and find them, which is really incorrect. Ninety percent of college recruiting takes place when you contact college coaches. The second myth is that high school coaches know everything that they should to be able to help you, and that is not always true, which is not their fault. But it's not, it's not common knowledge. I've coached at the junior college level and at... Utah Valley State College, which is a Division One, a mid-Division One, the rules and regulations for recruiting are completely different. Uh, what you look for is completely different, but the one thing that is common for a college coach at any level is that your time and your recruiting budgets are very limited, so you're not going to be able to find everybody in the country. Well, that's, that's really what we're talking about here, that there's a sort of a, 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 a bottleneck uh, because... Let's face it, uh, most colleges in this country have very limited uh, budgets uh, for recruiting. A- and, of course, c- uh, high school kids have usually have very little idea of just what's out there and what's available in terms of various programs. And, and unfortunately, there is a, it all is time-sensitive because, let's face it, you only have a, so many months to actually you know, make calls and, and, re- and find out about programs and find the right program for you. And unfortunately, and this is what I guess I'm getting at in all this, unfortunately, a lot of kids, too many kids who say, gee, I was all league or I was all county or all state, whatever, they apply to colleges, they get some form letters from a college coach, they go to that school and end up going out for the team there and finding out that uh, they weren't recruited, the coaches really know who they are, and a kid ends up saying, well, I'm at the school, I'm no longer playing sports, maybe I should transfer someplace else. I mean, it just it becomes a very unsatisfying and very unsettling situation for a lot of kids and this is where athletic quest comes into focus now you're not going to guarantee any kids going to walk in there and get a college scholarship but at least the kid has a much greater and much uh, strongly more informed kind of process as to finding out programs that work for that individual's needs well that's one of the reasons we actually developed this program even the people on my staff have all played at the collegiate level at different levels but couple of really quick facts. First, there are different governing bodies for college athletics. The most common that everyone is familiar with is the NCAA, but even the NCAA has Division I, Division II, and Division III. There are three governing bodies for four-year colleges. The NCAA is one. The NAIA is another. Mm -hmm. And the NCCAA, the National Christian College Athletic Association, is a third. There are also three governing bodies for junior college athletics around the country. There's a COA in California with over 120 junior colleges. There's the NWAC, Northwest Athletic Association of Colleges, in Oregon and Washington with their own tournaments and governing bodies with 34 junior colleges. And then you have the NJCAA, 
which rules and guidelines are totally different from the NCAA at four-year level. It, it, it's extraordinary how much information and how much misinformation is out there. The, the truth of the matter is, folks, uh, if, if your child wants to consider playing sports in college, uh, you have to get all this kind of background information as soon as possible. Yes, it does take a little, a little uh, work uh, to get it done right, but clearly uh, having a website like Ath- Athletic Quest is the way to go because, after all, this is the fount of information you need. Okay, let me, let me take a pause here, John. We'll come back, and, and I have some more questions for you, and we'll take calls as well about this entire process of college recruiting and what high school sports parents should know about the entire process, which can be very arduous and very confusing and at times frustrating. My guest is John Scott. Uh, He is the CEO of Athletic Quest. And by the way, John, before I forget, let me make sure I give the uh, the web address, uh, the website address. It's the the three W's dot athletic quest dot net. Again, www dot athletic quest dot net. And uh, let's uh, let's get right to our callers at seven one eight nine three seven six 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 six. Let's go to uh, let's go to uh, Steve out in Patchogue. Steve, good morning. You're on the fan. Good morning, gentlemen. Uh, I just want to let you know, Rick, I'm a 1976 graduate of a high school baseball team on Long Island, and mm-hmm. I was a victim of playing on a team with one player being scout- heavily scouted and recruited, and my coach was obsessed with this player and let the other eight or nine players that had potential go unlooked and could not rely on any recruiting letters. That's 29 years ago. Mm-hmm. And uh, coincidentally, those, including myself, the other eight or nine players did walk on to Division two schools just by being aggressive. And uh, even now in uh, you know, uh, reunions, we still talk about that lack of support from our coach because he was so obsessed in getting that one particular player signed. Now, and John, I'm I'm in agreement that your program is top notch. While I lived in California after graduating from college, I helped my younger brother, who was an All American lacrosse player, um, who was getting heavily recruited on the eastern part of the United States. Uh, I did sign him up for this service, and the publicity and the and the networking was invaluable. And I just want to let parents know that. You know, your son could be a victim of a coach's obsession, and your son may get overlooked in that three hundred or five hundred dollar investment for the filming and for the networking is invaluable. Whether your son does go on to play at that particular school that he or she wants to, but there are other universities that do have monies that could uh, easily. Uh, help your child go into a, a division two or three program and get the proper education and continue his athletic ability and i just thank you guys for this program this morning and like i said i am a victim of that uh lack of support and you know my my teammates in high school we still talk about that 29 years ago steve it's a uh, it's awful nice of you to give a call and 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 thank you for sharing that with us you know the fact is he says you know it's happened over two three decades ago it still bothers him and, and john this gets right back to what exactly you're talking about but the truth is if you rely upon your high school coach to do all the heavy lifting for you, as Steve just pointed out, that may not happen. He may be focusing on another player. Uh, and so the truth of the matter is, in much the same way that you're going to go uh, and, and search out colleges for your son or daughter, uh, whether they're an athlete or not, this is the same thing. It's going to take a little elbow grease to sit down and, and go through uh, the process to make sure that your son or daughter finds the right program. And, John, obviously, I'm sure you agree with this because that's what Athletic Quest is all about. Yeah, it really is. And let's just mention a couple of things real quickly. Uh, Steve talked about being from New York and playing baseball. There's 108 baseball colleges or that have college programs in the state of New York. But also, we are not a recruiting service. It's important to point that out. What we did is we went out and built a recruiting system mm-hmm. that the player and the parent could work together, did not need the assistance of a high school coach to do this. The assistance of a high school coach can be beneficial. But what it enables an athlete to do is we provide, one, a college competition valuation form, which, Rick, you've gone through. Mm-hmm. 
and it takes 10 criteria and then totals a score and then rates an athlete on what level of college competition that they're best suited to compete at. And it's been proven after being evaluated by over 250 college athletic directors and coaches to be 98% accurate. No service does that for you. I'll tell you a really quick story. Uh, we were at Copper Hills High School, a really large high school in the state of Utah. Went in on a cold call, met with a baseball coach, and we started to show him our data, our evaluation form, our website, and we got three minutes into the conversation, and Nick DeLuca is the coach, and he said, you know what, fellas, I, I don't want to see anymore. And, and we said, well, did we do something to offend you? He said, no, not at all. He says, you don't understand. He says, I worked for two of those types of recruiting services, two different ones, and he says, do you have any idea what the ratio was for a recruiting coach like I was to an athlete? So I have no idea. He says it was 300 to 1. Jeez. So if you want to rely on that, uh, everything works if you do. And will some of that help? Yes. But you have no control over if they want to put you up as a notch in their bullet case saying that they found you a $500 academic scholarship to a university that costs 30000 We have complete control over that. We let you know what the schools cost. Um, well, half, I over half of the Division threes or excuse me, over half of the four-year colleges and universities in the country do not offer athletic scholarships. They're Division threes. They only offer academic scholarships. We know exactly where they are. We know what they cost. We know what your evaluation should be, and that's one of the big differences. We built a system, so every school year you work a different official college recruiting book, four-year school year, grade 9, 10, 11, 12, even junior college to move on to a four-year. It includes an instructional video teaching you what you need to do and when you need to do it. It includes the college competition evaluation form. And then it includes the website, which we have over 2,300 colleges at every level. And that's one of the other differences between our system and other services is they may offer just a focus on baseball or only NCAA schools. They leave out most often the NAIA schools. Mm -hmm and at least one or two, if not all three, of the different junior college governing bodies. We have every college athletic program in the country, and we're the only ones that do. All right, let me get back to our callers. Let's go to uh, Arturo over in New Jersey. Arturo, hi, you're on the fan. Good morning, gentlemen. Good morning. Good morning. Quick question for you. Uh, realizing that a number of talented high school athletes do not play high school baseball or any other sport, is it possible that a serious a high school athlete especially in baseball, who plays, say, AAU, very competitive baseball, if not get offered a scholarship, at least an invitation to a college? Yes, it is possible. In fact, there are a lot of club teams. Uh, you see this in volleyball. You, you see this in lacrosse in different places that have athletes that are talented enough to go and play. We offer 20 different sports that you can search all the colleges in the country by. And as far as club teams go, uh, it's possible to do, but let me point out, having been a college coach and having seen college coaches do funny things, mm -hmm. it costs a college coach zero to say, hey, why don't you come to our school, walk on and try out, and good chance you'll have a place to play. Okay. They can do that to 500 athletes and drop right. 480 of them. So you have to be careful of that. The recruiting rule you need to follow is go where you are wanted, mm -hmm. not where you want to go. Absolutely. Very good. Thank you so much. Thanks, Arturo. And, 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 you know, that, that's a good point, John, that, that Arturo's talking about. And the way it's, it, things have evolved now, there are a lot of top high school athletes who say, you know what, I'm not going to play for my high school team because I'm playing for my travel or my club team, which is a, a, much, is a step up in terms of the level of competition. Uh, the high school program, the kid might play there and get lots of accolades and awards, but he'd rather or she'd rather play on, on a club or travel team. And again, as he was saying, that's, you know, can you still make that happen? Clearly you can, because obviously the college coaches are going to be tuned into those, those more highly competitive teams as well. Completely. And, Rick, we've got, uh, just to give you an example, men's volleyball typically is not a high school varsity sport in most states in the country. Mm -hmm. But there are a ton of men's volleyball club teams. And there are, just to mention, 
55 colleges or universities in the state of New York that offer men's volleyball. <laughs> I gather you're working your, your website as we speak about these various programs. <laughs> just, just a click away. <laughs> okay, let's continue with our callers. Let's go to uh, Al. Al's on a cell phone. Hi, Al, you're on the fan. Good morning, guys. Good morning. Hi, I was just heading into work, and it's a pretty interesting subject. I just went through a uh, you know, year's worth of recruiting. My son uh, came out of a small high school and uh, wound up with a nice Division One baseball scholarship. But the process um, through, I guess it was you know, almost a year, it actually became almost a second job for me. Mm-hmm. There's so much time to put into this and following up every phone call and every email and uh, attending showcases. You can't, kids that, uh, just so the high school kids know, the odds of having a college coach come out and see you during your high school season is almost slim to none. Correct. Now, unless you're already known as a potential All-State player, in which case everybody knows you anyhow, and they're going to see you during the summer, uh, they're, you know, they're playing that time of the year. The chances of them coming out are slim to none. So you really need to lay out you know, a program for the year and say, okay, you know, here's where, these are the things we're going to attend. These are the things we need to get to. If we had sat back, obviously he was a good player to, to, to receive the scholarship to a, a, a good Division One university, but if we had sat back... Um, we had an inexperienced high school coach, you know, a program that wins two, three games a year. Um, you really have to work it hard. And, and for the people that, you know, lucky for me, I had a baseball background. For the people, uh, you know, the, the players with parents that aren't familiar with the process, they really need to get to somebody and uh, have somebody, you know, <laughs> in their corner working for them because it's a tough no, I think we lost Al, but I think the the, he's, the point is well made that he just went through this process, John, and clearly uh, his son uh, was able to get a college scholarship. But as he said, you know, it, it was it was very very difficult, a very uh, challenging process. And he said he had a little bit of a background in baseball, but you know, it is difficult. We're talking this morning with John Scott. John, let me ask you: uh, Can you stay with us after the break? And because I have a lot more questions and more callers for you. Yes, completely. And if I can, just for ten seconds, Rick, sure. make a comment about the last caller. Less than five percent of all the colleges and universities out there are NCAA Division One. So we see it on ESPN, we hear it in the newspapers, and you know what? Ninety-five percent of the athletes are not going to play Division One sports. His son was an exceptional athlete. It's obvious, and you don't need to go through sending. 300 videos out. If you send an email to a college coach having been one at two different levels and your resume is, is good, which we have a player profile you can email, mm-hmm. uh, you know what? They will call you. You don't need to worry about it. But if you're a Division three, they'll call you if you're a Division three. When we come back, I'll tell you a really quick story about that. All right. Let's take a time out. We're talking with John Scott about the whole college recruiting process, and we'll continue to take your calls at 718 937 Six 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 six. We'll take a pause. Here's John. He has your flash. Okay, we're talking this morning with John Scott of Athletic Quest. We're taking your calls about the entire process of high school athletes who want to go on to play college ball, either at the junior college, Division One, Two, or Three level. It is complicated, uh, and it's a it's really kind of a forest that you have to sort of find your way through to make sure your kid finds the right program for him or her. And we're taking calls at 718-937-6666. John, let's uh, get back to our callers. Uh, let's go to uh, Alan in Wayne, New Jersey. Alan, hi. You're on the fan. Hi. How you doing, guys? Good. Morning. Uh, my daughter's a tennis player. We just started the process. In fact, uh, listening to you has kind of validated what I've done. I've hired a, uh, a strategy guy who does college tennis. She's kind of a, got a middle ranking you know, and so just listening to what you said has, has really made me feel good about what I've done so far. She's going to be playing in a showcase coming up uh, a week from now up at Yale. What year in school is she? She's uh, a junior. She'll be a senior next year. She's, you know, got a pretty good uh, sectional rating in the USTA, and that seems to be where the colleges look at. You know, high school, the competition is, uh, is different in different areas. We live in northern New Jersey. She happens to play some good competition in high school, but uh, they really look at that USDA rating. Well, Alan and, and, and John, you can comment upon this. Certainly, uh, when you have the individual sports like tennis or swimming or gymnastics, sports like that, golf, 
I gather it's a little easier for the college coaches to to uh, to find uh, these talented athletes because everything is sort of quantified, and of course track and field as well, since I would think things are are measured. Uh, John, is that your sense also? It is, and I'll just mention there's 21 colleges or universities in New Jersey with tennis programs for. Well, let's look at the women's. There's 24 for women's, and in New York, there are another 98 for women's tennis. So recruiting services can be very beneficial uh, for anybody. Uh, one of the differences it's very important to understand is they're going to cost oftentimes 1000 to $5,000 to do the work that you really could do yourself from online. But no mistake about it, uh, having someone help you can very, be a very positive thing. Tennis is a specialized sport. But as long as college coaches know you are out there, that is the key, and people underestimate their own power and ability to get the job done. You contact a college coach, they do not need a fancy resume. They do not need a film. They will let you know if they want to see a film. You just provide for them what your stats and data are, email it to them, and boom, they will get a hold of you if they're interested. We had a young man that was an all-state player his junior year, six foot one, and he was on this program, and with the recruiting books, we provide monthly checklists. On the monthly checklist, one of the requirements he had for marketing himself was to contact 25 colleges that month off the website. Mm -hmm. He did that. And two weeks later, his father called and said, well, we're a little disappointed with the program. We said, what are you disappointed about? He says, well, we contacted the 25 colleges. Only two responded. One said they were not interested. I said, I have two questions for you. The competition for college, the evaluation form that you filled out, what rating were you, were you at? He said, well, we were NCA Division Three. I said, okay, email me the list of colleges that you contacted. I'll tell you what the problem is. Here's who they contacted. Kentucky, Duke, North Carolina, UNLV. You get the idea. Those are all Division Ones. I called the father back and I said, Mr. Smith, I said, you know what your son has in common with 30,000 high school basketball players in the state of Kentucky? He said, no, what? I said, he's six foot one. <laughs> Alan, uh, go ahead, Alan. You had a question? Okay, this one. Uh, Division three, they don't give athletic scholarships. I understand that. Yeah. You know? And how does it work in terms they do give, you know, grants or, and things? Well, over 40% of the student athletes at the college level have some form of academic scholarship. So, Student athletes and parents should never underestimate the power of that. But a comparable level of NCA Division Three is a different governing body in the country, the NAIA, and they have over 400 colleges and universities. And they do offer forms of athletic scholarships as well. So you're able to search those. But uh, a good rule of thumb is put in applications for grants for academic scholarships January 2nd of your senior year because it's like having two buckets. One is 99% full. It's easy to get something out. The other is 10% full if you do it in April or May, right. and it's very limited who's going to get what. Al, let me just chip in with this. Uh, my son uh, was going through this process uh, four years ago uh, and, and was looking at a bunch of programs at various levels for baseball, D1, D2, and D3. We were uh, amazed and, and delighted that uh, at the D3 level, which, as you say, they don't give out any ac uh, athletic scholarships, but a lot of D3s were looking for good students and said, you know, come right. here, play a sport you want to play, but we'll also get you some sort of academic scholarship. They have various names for it. Yeah, that's where I'd like this to go, and, uh, you know. Well, this is get into a better school that she might have gotten into otherwise. Well, that's that's again part of this process, and you're asking all the right questions. That's the kind of thing that that, that parents you know have to persevere on. Alan, thanks for the call, and good Thank luck you with very your daughter. Much. You bet. Great show. Take care. Thank you. Let's uh, move quickly. Let's go over to uh, to Jim. He's on a cell phone. Jim, hi. You're on the fan. Hey, how are you guys doing? Good. Um, I was just uh, listening, and uh, I'm driving in my car. My son uh, just finished his first year. Uh, at a uh, small uh, school in uh, upstate New York, Division Three baseball, and uh, I, I wish I had known about your recruiting um, service uh, two years ago when we started this whole process, because it's uh, it's really difficult to go through, and you know we really didn't get any help from uh, his high school coach or the school, and the advice that they did give us, we found out was all the timing was wrong, and we wound up doing it uh, on our own, but. 
I, I do have to say that um, I, I think the whole process is um, it could be kind of demeaning and humiliating in a sense that I, I feel that most of these coaches are, if they weren't coaching um, in the sports that they're in, whether it's Division One, Two, II, or Three, they they would almost be what I call unemployable. <laughs> um, and I say that in jest, but it's it's really true. I mean, we. We scheduled appointments with coaches where we drove three hours to get there. I called to confirm them, and, you know, the guys spent five minutes with us. Um, I don't think things like that are right. And if that only happened once or twice, then you know that that's not the norm. But this is pretty much the case. I'd say maybe 30% were professional, answered letters, answered emails. Some of them were completely unapproachable. No contact whatsoever. Uh, my son would send letters, emails. So, you know, I would get involved and make a phone call, and uh, they wouldn't even talk to me. And uh, Well, Jim, this is, this is yeah. exactly what we're talking about. Yeah. And I, I agree with you. Yes, unfortunately, uh, there, there's a certain uh, percentage of, of college coaches who either are, uh, as you say, I don't say they're unemployable, but certainly they, they some, somewhat are lacking in terms of professional uh, interpersonal skills. I uh, just say if somebody if you make an appointment to, to, to drive to a campus with your son or daughter and you you know two three hours and you've confirmed this and the coach uh, gives you two minutes of his time, that, it's inexcusable. That, that's a, well, at least that tells you if nothing else that boy oh boy I'm not going to that college I and mean, that's, right. that's 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 not that's not going to happen for him uh, and and I think that's a very painful part of the process which mm -hmm. is why John you know with Athletic Quest. You know, you're going to have these coaches calling you saying, yes, please bring your kid here. Please come contact us. Let's talk on the phone. Let's, let's communicate. And that's, we hope, as you said, the process can be simplified so the kind of nightmares you went through with your son uh, can be avoided. Right. Can, can I make one other comment? Yes, very quickly. Okay, uh, one thing about these uh, showcases, especially in baseball, mm -hmm. we found out that most of them are really just little side businesses from college coaches. And most of the coaches, or they always adver advertise major league scouts, mm -hmm. will be there. Seventy percent of who they advertise were never there. And you might get a few coaches from schools you never even heard of. And, you know, it's just a, uh, uh, it's kind of like a baseball camp showcase that they make their money in the summer on. Well, I, know, I know some of them are real and... Uh, and do what they say that they're going to do. But and I'm glad, to... Jim, I'm glad you brought that up because, yes, there are, it is very much a situation where some are, are just strictly caveat emptor and you go there and it's a lot of hype and nothing happens. Trying to get recruited is a lot like dating or courting. You're going to know pretty quickly if someone has interest in you. <laughs> and in fairness to college coaches, uh, we mentioned at the beginning, they don't have a lot of time. And so they, there are official recruiting visits to colleges and universities that are unofficial. A lot of what this caller did were unofficial visits. In other words, it was on his dime. Mm -hmm. And so because coaches' times are limited, uh, you know, you're not going to get a lot of that attention. When any athlete in the country can go to our website at athleticquest.net, they can do a Google search for Athletic Quest, it'll come up, and they can register for a free profile, player profile. Every college coach in the country can come in and look at that, and, yeah. and they'll get some help that way. You've got over 8 million high school athletes in the country with in over 2,300 colleges. So college coaches aren't going to get to everybody. It is like dating or courting, and well, people John, have me, to understand the difference. Let me stop you there, John Scott. The website is athleticquest.net. Folks, I strongly urge you to check it out. John, many, many thanks. Pleasure, Rick. Thanks for having us on. Okay, that's going to do it for this edition of the Sports Edge. For more information about the number one rated college sports recruiting system in the United States, Contact us at AthleticQuest, 1-800-467-7885, or go to our website at www.